So unsolicited advice, parents get a lot of it. It is probably one of the most irritating things we have to deal with. And unsolicited advice is an interesting mix of motivations and emotions. Usually the unsolicited advice giver is trying to make themselves feel important and like they know so much. And, and honestly, a lot of times at a deep level, they are actually trying to be helpful, even if they're being super irritating. And then the person that is receiving the advice is usually feeling like the advice giver is telling them, you don't know what they're what you're doing. I know better. I'm smarter than you. You should listen to me. So it's this like, it's this clash, this person feeling like, oh, I'm being so helpful. I'm so smart. This other person feeling like, I feel like you're attacking me. I feel like you're saying I'm dumb. It's just not productive. Really, the only kind of advice that is productive is the solicited kind. Um, but luckily, there are ways to gracefully navigate that unsolicited advice and avoid situations where it's being shoved down your throat. So another reaction that you might experience when receiving unsolicited parenting advice is feeling rushed to make decisions about how you want to parent. Because for a lot of new parents, we feel a little bit insecure about what we're doing. We don't really know the techniques that will or won't work for us. And having somebody say, I know what you should do. You should do this makes us feel like, well, okay, maybe, I don't know, uh, maybe I should do that. When really what we need is time and space to figure out what works for our family. And a and you know the parents in your life, you know the people that you can reach out to if you want their advice. They don't have to, again, shove it down your throat. So, so know that if this unsolicited advice is making you feel rushed to make decisions about your parenting, know that it doesn't have to do that. Know that you can step out of that situation, that it is your right to take your time in figuring out the parenting techniques that work best for your unique family. Don't let somebody pushy, pushy make you think that you need to have this like firm parenting philosophy immediately. You take all the time that you need. Okay, um, it's also really common to want to tell the advice giver why certain advice would not work for your family. And let me tell you, they don't wanna hear it and you don't wanna waste your breath. That will just go down a road where you have an unnecessary argument with them. It's, you're not gonna change their mind and they're not gonna be suddenly be like, oh my God, you're so right. I don't know why I ever gave that advice. When people give advice, like a lot of times it's because they feel so secure and like firm in how they're doing it. And they want everybody else to do it that way as well. So don't even waste your breath trying to convince somebody why a certain advice won't work for your family. Okay. A couple other tips with this. So you have every right to keep certain parenting questions, challenging um, challenges, conundrums to yourself when in the presence of an advice giver. So for example, if you're over at your mother-in-law's house and she's like, how's the baby sleeping? And you know that, well, actually I'm having a lot of trouble with the baby sleeping, but you don't want to go down that road with her. You don't want to hear all of her advice. You're under no obligation to share that information with her. You can be like, you know what? It's fine. It's We're, we're figuring it out or use some vague response. And I'll get into lots of responses um, in my next tip. But again, you are under no obligation to engage in those conversations with people that you know love to give unsolicited advice. You can disengage from that conversation. And here are some ways to do it. So really the only response that somebody wants when they're giving unsolicited advice is an unsarcastic version of like, oh my gosh, thank you. I never would have thought about that. What did I ever do before you were in my life giving me unsolicited advice? You're so smart. They just want you to agree with them and be like, yes, I'll, I can't believe I haven't thought of that. You, Yes, I'll do that. Thank you. You are my savior. You don't have to say any of that to them. What you can say, and again, there's no wrong thing to say, but here's some ideas that might help. Um, something that I say a lot is like, hmm, that's, that's interesting. I'll think about that. Or, you know what, I'm really sorry. I have to pee. I'll be right back. Um, you can say, so insert parenting choice here. So you can say, you know what? 
bed sharing is working just fine for us right now. No need to fix what isn't broken. It sounds like that worked really great for your family. I love how there's so many unique ways to parent a child and that every parent gets to make their own decisions. Another one, I'm sure that that is an ideal option for some families. We're going to keep doing what feels right for us. Uh, we tried that, but it didn't work for us. Just shows that every child is different. I'm doing what the pediatrician advised. This is a great one. And it doesn't even matter if your pediatrician did advise that or not. Usually you can shut somebody down by saying, a medical expert said that this is how I should do it. So thank you very much. Um, another one, luckily we don't have to agree on the right way to feed a baby, for example. We can each do it our own way. Thank you for your concern. You can also say, I'll keep that in mind. Anyways, tell me about that cat grooming club you joined. Change the subject. Those are just some ideas. Um, you can also check in with yourself after hearing a piece of unsolicited advice. So most of the time, that's just like a piece of information that you can just toss out. But every now and then, there is a gem in that unsolicited advice. So when you're not with that person, you can step aside and just consider the advice that they gave you. You can think, is this something that just intuitively feels like it would not work for my family? Or is it actually something that I feel like might actually be a good piece of advice? So again, every now and then there is some wisdom in that unsolicited advice. Um, but take, take time to process it. You don't have to process it with that person that's shoving the advice down your throat. As I mentioned before, it's also nice to remember that in many cases, not all the time, but in many cases, the advice giver is coming from a good place. They are actually trying to be helpful. They think that they have like found the holy grail of parenting information and they want to share it with you. So usually their intention is not to make you feel stupid or not to make you feel like a bad parent. They're trying to make themselves feel good. They're trying to make themselves feel like a good parent and they're probably trying to, to help. But that does not mean that you just need to let them yammer on with their advice or that you need to say like, yes, I, I'm doing it wrong because I'm not doing it your way. You can just gracefully get out of the conversation. And finally, this is one that I'm still working on, um, avoid being the advice giver. So I can go on and on about like how people shouldn't give unsolicited advice, but I do it all the time. And so I'm such a hypocrite in that way. So I'm working on, I mean, I'm, I guess I'm giving you advice right now. Um, <laughs> but, but it's nice for us to at least be aware, like when that unsolicited advice is on the tip of our tongue to be like, okay, is this something that the person is asking for? Are they asking like, hey, what are your thoughts on breastfeeding? Or how did you get your baby to sleep? If so, share away. But if that person is really not asking for your opinion, it's best to keep it to yourself. All right, I hope that made sense. I felt like I was rambling a little bit, but I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions about it, let me know in the comments below.